So I really didn't want to make this video, but if it helps anybody pass the CompTIA A plus exam, that will make me feel good about making this video. Now, I'll never forget the feeling of defeat when walking out of the testing center and seeing somebody in a Lamborghini, an orange Lamborghini, and just feeling like I'll never have a chance at a decent life, you know, and I'll never forget that feeling of defeat. But anyways, I'm going to walk you through start to finish about what it's like to take the exam. Now, number one, you have to be there 15 minutes early. I was 30 minutes early. I had to pay for parking with this app. It didn't open till 10, so I had to wait 15 minutes in the sun uh, by my scooter to pay for parking. After I paid for parking, I typed in a code to get into the testing center. Once I got into the testing center, I went up an elevator. I put all my stuff in a red bag. She locked it up, put it on the back of my seat. Once I got into test, I already knew I was in hot water starting out. Everybody online, even Google, swears that CompTIA A plus Core 1 is 90 questions. They gave me 70 questions and they told me that in the beginning. So I already knew that that gives me a lower ratio of wiggle room of how many questions I have to get right. If you have 90 questions, that means there's more wiggle room to get stuff wrong. 70 questions, you really don't have a lot of wiggle room. So right off the top, I knew that this was going to be not what I expected. And that's why I'm telling you before you go. With a testing bank, I think it could probably be 70 questions, 75 questions, 80 questions, 90 questions. Nobody talks about this, but this is very important. So if you waited 675 divided by 70 questions, that means if we were to do it per question, you could you only get 9.64 points per question. So technically, if we were to mathematically look at it, I missed that test by four questions. And I just want you to think about that. Four questions is a difference between you paying $250 again. So you really want to know this stuff. Now, if you're thinking I probably didn't study hard enough, I've got flashcards, I went to a class, I've got the book right here. However, going into it, I did know I was rusty. I will be honest and tell you that I knew I was rusty, uh, but I knew that core one is the ticket to taking core two and getting certified and getting a job. And a lot of these jobs are not even looking at you without that CompTIA plus. So I think that's why I kind of jumped the gun. The other thing is, is I feel like on the internet, there's a lot of peer pressure and maybe there's people that have been in the field or have a good background, but there's no shortage of videos online that are like, Hey, I passed CompTIA a plus in two days, or it only took me two months to pass CompTIA a plus, but I'm here to tell you that everybody's different. And if you're not hitting 70, 80, or even 90, 100 on these practice tests, be prepared. You might be able to get lucky and get past it, but I'm just telling you, practice, practice, practice on these practice tests because CompTIA, they will trick the heck out of you with these questions and the way they word it. They will make it look like the wrong answer is the right answer. And everybody says that, but I'm telling you firsthand, I'll even show you my paper where I got 638. They will do the most to trick you out of this test. So you've got to know it really well. Other than that, I just say do all the practice tests you can. Anything you just don't feel too strong on and couldn't explain on your own, you probably need to revisit it and re, you know, retest yourself, really understand what it is. Also too, I found some great resources after failing the exam. I'll put some great resources in the description box below because I felt like if I knew these things before, I probably would have passed the test of flying colors. So I'm gonna tell you. It's gonna be in the description box below to help you if you're taking this for the first time. But yeah, I failed 638. I know a lot of other people fail, but they're not making videos about it because I feel like on YouTube, it's all like, I passed, I passed, I passed. You know, what about the people that didn't pass? Because I know there's a lot of people that didn't. And $250 is a lot for this test, but uh, but anyways, long story short, I hope this video helped you and I hope to revisit and make another video and tell you about how I pass, etc. But yeah, this test is no joke and don't feel like you're dumb if you didn't pass, you know, but also don't quit. And I don't plan on quitting. I do plan on passing it because a pass is a pass. After you do the last question on the test, you got a chance to review every question, even ones that you flagged so that you can re-review it. And you also do not get your score until after you do the survey. So they make you do the survey before you get your score. They ask you a lot of personal questions on this survey. So that's just something to think about. You don't just get your score after you get to the end of the questions. 
you actually had to do that survey. Just something to think about because I was tired after the test, but I still had to do the survey. Then it took forever. It was like loading, loading, loading. Then it finally gave me a score. And it tells you literally if you pass or fail. The last thing is you don't wanna walk out without your paper that tells you exactly what you did not get. That paper will help you study and make sure that you pass the second time. Wait for that paper. I had to wait extra long. It was embarrassing because I failed it, but I said, whatever, I need that paper. So just something to think about.